All righty. Little mood change. Find your breath. And I asked you to start in this pose on purpose so that we could take a humble moment. There's a lot happening in the world right now. And today happens to mark a really important day for our community. We were touched pretty deeply a little more than a month ago. And the kids from Parkland have decided to start a movement. And I personally stand with them. And I know that we all have choices that we can make and we all take sides. But the truth is that we're all one. We're human beings. And my real feeling is that if we had just took the time to think more about being nice, being kind, being a little more sensitive, and a little more open and compassionate, knowing that there is a common thread that runs between all of us. We all breathe. We all love our kids. We all worry about our parents as they get older. All we really want is to love and be loved. And if that could be more in our consciousness, I think that the world would begin to shift. And so I know if you're coming to yoga in the park and you hear my messages week in and week out, you kind of buy into that to some degree. That you're looking to develop a relationship with yourself and feel like a part of a community. And so today I just want us to soften our edges, be a little more sensitive. Let's stretch our arms forward. Just feel the body stretch and don't be aggressive about it. Press firmly into your palms. Just feel the ground beneath your hands. And then just kind of start pulling yourself up. Just pull yourself a little bit forward and then tuck your toes and straighten your knees. And push yourself up and back into downward facing dog. It's your first real active pose. <clears throat> so it's an opportunity to notice. Notice your body, notice how you feel. Can you maintain some of that sensitivity? I want you to push your right hand a little bit more, lift your right hip a little bit more, and then sink your right heel a little bit more. And notice how that right side of the body just lit up. It didn't have to become hard or fierce or like you're tearing yourself open. It just was an awakening. So that right heel is sinking, sinking, sinking. Right heel sinking, yeah. And then relax the right side and do it on the left. Just wake up the left side. Just feel that happen. It's really incredible. When we put our consciousness and just a little bit of effort into one movement, we awaken. Now soften the left side. And then see if you can do all of it at the same time. So your whole body is working equally in balance with sensitivity. Take one more breath right where you are. I know it's been a long down dog. So just look at your hands and start to walk your feet forward to the top of the mat. Inhale and lengthen. Then exhale and fold. Again, sensitively, two more times. Halfway up, inhale, lengthen. And then exhale and fold. Here's the last one. Come halfway up, lengthen your spine. Then fold deeply. And then if you would, please bend your knees, tuck your tailbone and your chin, and roll yourself up. So tuck the chin, not chair pose. Tuck your tailbone and your chin and round your back. Pull in your core, keep your hamstrings tight, push into your feet and roll it up slowly. Inhale, reach your arms up to the sky. And then hands right to your heart. Pause for a moment, close your eyes. 
Even with your eyes closed, you can feel the sense of the community around you. I think that we have a duty as citizens of this community to stand with each other, to stand up for what we believe in, to figure out what we're passionate about and not be complacent, and everyone in their own way make their mark in the world. It is possible. And your mark might be that you've kept your family safe, you've raised kids that contribute something into the world. It could be that you own a really beautiful big corporation that does good things and makes products that really serve. I don't know what it looks like. We all have our own dreams, we all have our own desires, we all move in our own directions and that's what makes it all so perfect. And so what is it for you? What makes you tick? Are you expressing it in the world in some way, in your own beautiful way? Think about it. Maybe you just have a magnificent yoga practice and you show up on the mat every day so that you are part of your own evolution and you know that your presence in the world is changing and so that's enough. To me, that would be enough. So maybe just for today, if we don't have some big plan, maybe we just show up and we do our yoga like we mean it. We know that the yoga is shifting us and we allow that to be enough. So on your next inhale, I want you to take your arms and reach up high to the sky. Reach like you mean it. Then exhale and fold over. Just fold down, let your head go. Lift and lengthen on your inhale. Now step, step back, plank pose. Hands on the floor, both feet back. Hold the belly firm. Take another breath. Let's bend our elbows and lower a little forward and down onto the belly. Take your time. Lay it all the way onto your mat. Inhale into cobra. Let's widen the collarbones, draw the shoulders back. And then exhale, release. Do it gently. Tuck your toes and move into downward facing dog again. Now, on your in-breath, take the right leg and stretch it up to the sky. Uh-huh, reach it up, spread through your toes, push through your hands so all four limbs are working just like when you lit up your down dog at the beginning of class. Let's breathe in together. And then exhale, step that right foot forward to the hands. Inhale, come up for high crescent lunge. Oh, I love the way you're moving today. Mindful, sensitive, present. Let's spread our fingers a little wider. Show a little more passion. Lift your heart. Take a breath. And then exhale. Bring it down. Hands to the floor. Step back to plank. And lower down slowly. Inhale. Cobra pose. A little baby back bend. Widen your chest. Exhale. Downward facing dog. Move with the belly in. So that you feel a little support. Now. Left leg goes up to the sky. I want you to stretch up through those toes. <laughs> Excuse me. Light up all four limbs. Feel alive in your body. Feel awake. And then let's step that foot forward to the hands. We're just going to take our time. Rise up for high crescent lunge. I like it. <laughs> See if you can make sure you have some weight on the pinky toe side of your right foot. Uh-huh. Arms reach, spread the fingers like rays of the sun. I want you to feel like your heart is being expressed through your hands. As your arms reach pretty fiercely, can you relax your shoulders down? Give me one more breath and then flow it out. Hands to the earth, step back lightly, belly in, lower slowly. Inhale for cobra and then exhale back into down dog. Every movement is an expression of who you are and how you want to be. Light it up. Take one more breath. Push back just a touch. And then look at your hands and bring your feet gracefully to the top of the mat. Halfway up, inhale, lengthen. Exhale and fold. 
With a flat back this time, rise all the way up. Lift your head and your chest. Reach your arms up high to the sky. Keep them there. Hook your thumbs together. And then take a little stretch to the right side. Feel your left side body wake up. Inhale, come back to center. And then stretch over to the left side. Just do it till you feel something, not till you kill yourself. Inhale, back to center. And then release your arms down by your sides, actually behind you. And then clasp your fingers together. Inhale, lift your chest and look up to the sky. And then exhale, fold in low. Head down, arms start to pull away from your back. Keep feeling your feet on the ground and just notice how your body is responding to the movements. Every time we take a new shape in the body, we have that opportunity to awaken something. I believe that we all want to live in a body that is awakened, not something that is dormant or sluggish. We want to feel vibrant and alive, and that is what our yoga does for us. Let's release our hands to our hips. Come halfway up, inhale. Empty out your lungs right there. And then inhale, rise up. Push down to stand up tall. Inhale, the arms reach high. And then exhale, fold in low. Lift and lengthen on your inhale. Take your right leg and step back onto your toes. Root that right hand down into the mat and twist open to your left side for me. Again, just like you're exploring. Like, I'm just curious how this feels. And then I'm going to be curious how that feels. When we begin to create sensitivity with ourselves, we actually open up the opportunity to be more sensitive with each other. Let's push down a little bit with that right hand so we can open the left chest just a touch more. And then the eyes go down, the hands go down. And just take a big step back into down dog. Skip everything in between. Let your head hang free for a moment. One breath, push back. Exhale, look forward. Walk your feet to the top of the mat. Come halfway up, inhale. Fold deeply, exhale. Here's your first chair pose. Let's bend our knees. Sweep the arms up high to the sky. Remember that when you reach your arms up, you don't have to put your shoulders up in your neck. You can relax the shoulders down and get pretty fierce with the triceps. Think about elbows straight more than shoulders in the neck. That's it. You got a mat. <laughs> so right now, I'm actually feeling like you've got a great attitude about this pose. I don't usually see these faces on the first chair pose. So I'm going to ask you to sit in a little deeper. And then maybe even one more time. Sit back in a little deeper. Yeah, you've got it. Push through your feet, come to standing. Stretch back if it feels good. And then bring your hands to your heart. Inhale again, arms reach. Exhale and fold. We're just gonna keep flowing. Inhale and lengthen. Left leg takes that step back. Left hand is gonna root down and then I want you to twist open to the right side. That's it. Let's make sure that we're nice and firm with the left leg. Get some support in the base of the pose. And then twist from your waistline. Are you breathing? Open up the chest. And then simply look down. Put your right hand down. Take a big step back into your downward facing dog. Just feel. Light it up. Hands, feet, hips, breath. Last inhale, push back a touch. And then look at your hands and bring it gracefully forward, both feet to the top of the mat. Come halfway up, inhale and lengthen. Exhale and fold. Here comes chair pose again. Maybe a better attitude this time. Maybe even like shout out a cheer, like arms are up and go woo! Yeah. <laughs> Attitude is everything. We are strong enough to do this. And we're patient enough to sustain it. Let your shoulders relax down from your ears. Feel the strength of your core. 
Focus for a moment on how beautiful and even your footprints feel, <laughs> feel on the earth. And then just sit in a little deeper. I love it. Take one more breath. Push through those feet. Come to standing. Stretch back if it feels good. And then hands come to the heart. Here we go. Inhale. Arms reach. Stretch it up. Exhale and fold. Lift and lengthen on your inhale. Good. Step, step back. <laughs> plank pose. We're going to hold plank this time. And roll it onto the right side for Vashistasana. And I'm going to give you three options so that you can make the pose a little bit easier. <coughs> I'm sorry. Stack your feet one on top of the other. Or put one foot in front of the other. Or take your left foot, bend the knee, and put your foot on the mat in front of you. When you are ready, you're going to lift those hips a little higher. Take a breath and look up at that left hand. And then return to plank pose. Step back, hands down. Lower slowly. Inhale into cobra. Exhale back, downward facing dog. All right, give me a big inhale and then an open mouth. Ah. Let's come forward into plank pose. Take it over to the left side. And now you know the three options. Stack your feet, put one in front of the other, or bend the right knee and put your foot on the mat in front of you. You get to choose, but you're going to push down to rise up. I want you to find your strength and lift those hips and lift those ribs. Look up at the right hand. Inhale, and then exhale. Return to plank pose and lower down slowly. Inhale into cobra. Exhale back, downward facing dog. <laughs> okay, walk your hands, please, to the back of the mat. Just walk them to the back of the mat so we can get the pressure off the upper body. And bend your knees about 90 degrees. Sweep your arms behind you like you are a downhill skier. I want your eyes forward, your heart forward. <coughs> Reach those arms back. Again, fierce through the triceps. Can you make your arms straight? I know that we all want that upper arm to stay toned. It's a hard muscle to keep toned. But when you wave to your friend across the park, you don't want that arm flapping in the wind, right? So straighten that arm. Feel the muscle tone. Let the heart soar forward. Look at the front edge of your mat. Uh-huh. Give me one more breath. And then forward fold. Ah. Uh. Inhale, halfway up, look forward. Walk it out to plank pose. Take a deep breath in plank, and then on your exhale, lower down slowly. Inhale into cobra, and then exhale all the way back to downward facing dog. Okay, right foot's gonna step up to the hands, but this time the left foot's gonna turn flat for warrior one. As you rise up, I want you to feel both feet flat on the mat. I want you to push down as you rise up. And I want you to focus a little bit on your heart space, your chest plate. Can you somehow shine your heart a little bit more forward? Can you get the left side of the body to come a little more forward? So we're warrior one facing forward. Mm-hmm. Yep. They say everything some of you look like you're completely on purpose, and some of you look confused. Some of you are just waiting for me to tell you what to do. But I'm going to inspire you. I'm going to ask you to give me your fullest expression of the pose. Could you bend your knee a little deeper? And as you sink down, how can you make the pose rise up at the same time? That's it. You look amazing. Reach your arms to the sky. Lift your eyes to the sky. Shine your heart forward with a big inhale. And then exhale, flow it out. Hands down, step back, and lower. Inhale into cobra, and then exhale, take it back into downward facing dog. How are you guys doing over here on the lawn? You good? Yeah? All right. Left foot steps up, right foot turns in. Warrior one, both feet are grounded, so that back foot is on the mat. Make sure the pinky toe side of that foot is on the mat. I'm on foot patrol right now. 
Yep, I'm looking at the arches of your feet to make sure that the back foot is grounded. And then I'm going to encourage you to like lean back a little bit to your back leg. That's so nice. So uh, the whole idea of making our poses feel lit up is that we find the balance of the actions, like we did in that first down dog. We have to push and pull. So let's sink down and rise up. Find it. Back leg is straight. Front leg is bent. And then come on in. Yeah. All right. Heart lifts a little higher. I want to see those triceps. Elbows straight. Take a breath, reach through your fingers, and then exhale, flow it out. Hands down, step it back and lower. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, down dog. Come to warrior again on the right side. Right foot steps, left foot turns in. Now you light it up. You know all the actions. I want you to find them in your body. This is an act of consciousness for you, how you express this pose. Make the base feel really solid. I want you to feel like a warrior, like you are fighting for something. And the truth is, every single day we are fighting for our lives. We can be peaceful warriors. Fighting doesn't mean that we're actually going to war. It means that we are standing up. We are having a voice. We are making a mark. Now I want you to stay right where you are, but drop your arms by your sides. And then clasp your hands behind your back like we did before and fold into humble warrior. Bow your head forward. One of the gifts of a humble warrior is that you can actually readdress the base. You can bend the front knee a little deeper and you can square your, <laughs> your hips. The right hip goes back, the left hip comes forward and you feel a little more solid there. Now, on your next inhale, I want you to push down to rise up. Lift your head, lift your chest, reach your arms, and then exhale, go ahead and flow it out. Hands come down, belly to the spine as you make your transition. Step back and lower. Inhale for cobra, heart open. Exhale, downward facing dog. So warrior again on the left side. Let's try that, left foot steps up, right foot turns in. And it's your expression this time. You work from the feet, the legs, the hips, all the way up through your body. Video? <laughs> oh, picture. So good. Heart plate forward. Turn your chest toward me. Yes, turn your chest toward me. Show me with your eyes, show me with your expression who you are in this moment. Take one more breath. I want you to be this. Live it. Breathe it. And then let your arms only come down. Clasp your hands behind you. Inhale. Let's extend just a little bit. And then exhale. Fold in. Humble warrior. Let the head drop down. And you can square your hips just a little bit more. Maybe drop in a little bit deeper. Feel the groundedness of this pose. Feel the grounding in your feet. Make sure your back leg is straight and your front one is bent. And then pushing even a little bit more into your right foot. Let's come on up. Head up, chest up, rise up, inhale, both arms reach, and then exhale, flow it out. Hands down, step back, and lower. How are you guys doing on the lawn over here? Good? Inhale, cobra. Exhale, take it back, downward facing dog. I don't really get to much because I lose my when I get over here. So I'm sending you my love right now, right here on the big lawn. And then I have to go back to center. <laughs> take one more breath. Look at your hands. Jump, step, or walk to the top of the mat. Get there with grace. Come halfway up, inhale. Fold deeply, exhale. Bend your knees for chair pose. Now I know you can hold it for a long time, so I'm gonna ask you to bring your hands to your heart and then take a twist to the right. Left elbow is gonna hook outside the knee. And I really want you to feel the leverage you get from that arm pushing against the leg. And then take your right arm and reach it up to the sky. Uh-huh, that's so good. 
Now bend your right elbow and wrap your hand behind your back. You don't have to go all the way around your waist. I actually prefer the back of your hand on your sacrum. So just stay like halfway, go on your sacrum. And use the pressing of your right hand on your back to open your left chest a little bit more. That's it. Just one more breath. And then let it go. Eyes go down, hands release, let the spine unfurl. Very nice, head heavy, breathing. You can actually feel the body parts that were lit up from that pose. Now when you feel inspired and you feel ready, we're gonna take chair pose with a good attitude, bend the knees, sweep the arms, and then hands to the heart and the twist goes to the other side. Know that everything matters, the way you stand in your feet, the way you hold your legs, if you can keep your hips square, the nice beautiful rotation of the spine and then the anchoring of that right arm against the left leg. You can feel the leverage that you get so you can release your left arm up. Feel the chest open wide and then bend your elbow, take the back of your hand onto your lower back and then push into the back of the hand and open up that left chest. That's it, you can feel the shoulder head move back, you can feel the collarbones wide and I want you to take one more breath Twist a bit on the exhale, and then let it go. Eyes down, hands down, release. Ah. All right, halfway up on the in-breath. Fold on the exhale. Bend your knees one more time, chair pose. Just wanna make sure those large muscles are nice and heated. And then we're gonna refine, they are? Yeah. <laughs> refine it a little bit. Work with me on this. Hug your outer hips in a little and lift your pelvic floor. And now lift your heels off the mat. So you're doing chair pose on your toes. I know that's always like worthy of a good laugh, right? You gotta have a sense of humor because doing chair pose like it wasn't enough. Now we have to do it just on our toes. All right, bring our hands together at the heart and let's take it down into a little toe squat. Uh-huh. That's it. If you have issues with your knees and you need to go a little wider, or you need to not come down so far, that's totally okay. We're gonna take a twist to the right side again. So take the left elbow outside of the right knee and then twist to the right. Everything matters here, all 10 toes. Right, like all lives matter, all toes matter. We need to always maintain a sense of humor, right? Chest wide. Come back to center and then forward fold. Let your hands go, let your knees straighten slowly, bow your head humbly. Recover for a moment. And then inhale, halfway up. Exhale and fold. Bend your knees, chair pose. And we're gonna take it up on the toes. I think our toes never get enough love. Lift those heels. Uh-huh, we stuff them in shoes when we go. There's like 30 bones in each foot. It's like a complicated network of things. And you ever stub your pinky toe? It can wreak havoc on your whole life, right? So right now, a little bit of love for your feet. Stay high on the toes, bring your hands to your heart, and lower yourself down slowly. Once you find your balance, we're gonna twist it to the left side. Put that elbow outside of the left leg, right elbow outside left leg. Use the leverage, push into your palms, and see if you can get your heart to open a little bigger. Breath should be steady. All right, you guys look amazing. When you're ready, go ahead and release. Come forward, straighten those legs, let your head go. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, fold. And no, you do not have to do chair pose again. Come up with a flat spine, head up, chest up, arms reach high. Good, exhale, hands to the heart. Inhale, arms reach. Exhale and fold. Halfway up, inhale, lengthen. Step, step back to plank and hold your plank pose. That's it. Shoulders are over the wrists. 
I want you to lift your right foot off the mat and then draw your right knee to your right elbow. Just squeeze it in tight. See if you can get it to touch. And then go ahead and take it into a one leg down dog. Go all the way up and back. Give me a nice deep breath in. And then I want you to take right knee to left elbow. Come forward, plank pose, cross the body. See if you can get it to touch. Keep your head up, look forward. And then back, all the way up and back. Oh yeah, you guys are super strong. Third one, best one. Eyes forward, just knee to chest. That's it, just knee to chest, eyes forward. Now, I want you to take your gaze and look to the left, and then step your right foot all the way out to the left. Pivot your back foot, heel in, and then lift your left arm up to the sky. Uh-huh, lift your hips high. You've got this, lift those hips high. Open your heart, maybe even take your arm back. Stretch your left chest open. Beautiful job, everybody. And then leave your feet as they are, but put your hand down. Hold right there, one breath. And then very carefully, step your right foot back to plank. Lower yourself down slowly. Inhale, cobra. Good, shoulders back. Exhale, downward facing dog. Beautiful job, we're coming to plank pose again. This time the left toes unplug from the mat. Lift your left leg and draw the left knee to the left elbow. Just squeeze it tight, you're super strong. You can do it, eyes forward. Uh-huh, one leg down dog. Take it all the way back. And then cross the body. Go over to the right elbow. Plank pose, cross and touch. And then all the way up and back. Third one, best one. Strong, knee to chest. Come forward, plank. I know you can hold this. And then begin to look out to your right and step your leg through. Roll your back heel flat and then lift the right arm up. That's it. Breath is steady. Lift your hips. One more breath. And then leave your legs as they are, but put your hand down. Hold. Just feel that stretch across your IT band. Breathe. And then step back. And lower. Good. Inhale, cobra. And exhale back. Downward facing dog. Walk your hands to the back of the mat. Your feet should be hip distance apart. And I want you to put all 10 fingertips on the mat. <coughs> Excuse me, about six inches in front of your feet. Mm -hmm. So be high up on the fingertips. And then just like an arch, just like halfway, I want you to walk your hands around to the right. Walk all the way around, go about as far as your heel, and try to keep your hips square. Just feel what's happening in the left side body. As your body goes to the right, your left hip pushes back to the left. Mm -hmm. Does that feel good? No? Yes? Does that feel good? Yeah. I was hoping that would feel good. You deserve one of those. Mm. Keep the weight even in both feet. Breathe into the sensations. And then just like a big giant rainbow, like an arc, go ahead, walk all the way back to the center of the mat and then over to the left side. Go as far as your heels. Make sure both feet are grounded. Don't lose your footprints. Push that down. Mm -hmm. And as your body is going left, Try to keep your hips square so that right hip is pulling back to the right. And just play with it. What do the sensations feel like? Are you being sensitive with your body? Are we still really being in tune to expressing our yoga our own way? I don't think anyone sets out to do yoga aggressively and kill themselves, right? But somehow we fall into our habits. Let's walk the hands back to the center. Inhale, look up. That's it. Walk your hands out to plank pose. And lower yourself down slowly. 
Inhale for Cobra. And then exhale back into Downward Facing Dog. Okay. Take a last breath in Down Dog. And then look at your hands and you can jump, step, or walk feet to the hands. Inhale and lengthen. Exhale, fold. Bend those knees, come into chair pose. Keep the arms reaching, come high on your toes, just like we did before. Hands to your heart, take it down low to that deep squat. Left elbow, outside right knee. So just repeating what we've already done. So this is like getting a do-over, right? If you didn't like the way the last one came out, you get to do it again. And if you're feeling like you want to take it a step further, I'm going to offer up an arm balance here. So you can look at the floor, put your hands down on the earth with your fingers pointing out to either Federal Highway or to downtown. So you got to go to the side. You go into the side. That's why we're twisting. And then that right leg goes right across both arms. You can lean your weight into your hands and you can come into what we call side crow. And there's even a variation to straighten your legs, but be aware that you have a neighbor behind you and you don't want to kick anyone in the head. I'm not getting a whole lot of participation over here on the lawn, so I'm going to come over and do it for you so you can see what I'm talking about. If you guys over here can't see, I hope I can do this on the wall. So we're in the little squat, we come into the twist, and then we put our hands down sideways so that our leg goes across the elbows, and then you come up and back. You can even extend your legs out. But just tipping, just tipping to the side. No, no, don't do that. <laughs> that's just sometimes we need a visual for learning, that's all. So we're just tipping our weight into our hands. So like put the hands down and just see what it feels like to rock some weight into your hands. And if you're looking out in front of you, if you're looking out like toward the way you're rocking, your feet <laughs> might actually lift. Sometimes you gotta try. Sometimes you just got to like say, what's the worst that'll happen? I'll slip off my arm and fall on my butt. Big deal. Look, I like the way you're trying now. Awesome. All right. <laughs> Let's take it to the other side. I'm seeing all kinds of creativity now. That's good. Yeah, sitting on your butt is actually a choice. And if you do it, own it. Right? Is that not what today's class is about? Like if you want to just sit back and watch, you know how much you can learn just from observing? That's it. Yeah, so we've got it. You guys on this side can see? Do you guys have a visual on this side? Do you know what, what it looks like? Should I do it up here so you can see? It is one of those kind of fun poses. So we go sideways, right? We're doing a twist to the side. This is what, where everybody was. And then you put your hands down, pointing out to the side, and you got to look that way. And so as you start leaning that way, and once you lean enough forward, you can pick your feet up. And then maybe even the legs extend out like that. I love, the young ones are always willing to try. You got to love the kids. I love the kids. I'm so happy when the kids come to yoga. They're always willing to try. Adults somehow have too much fear, or we think we're not going to be able to. These are not beliefs that we need to carry. Anything is possible. All right, one last breath, wherever you are. And bring it back to center. And it's probably a good time to sit if you're already sitting. Most of us are down. So I'm just going to go with that. Go ahead and have a seat. Close your eyes for a moment and just meet yourself exactly where you are. Listen to the dialogue that's going on in your head right now. Were you celebrating somebody else's accomplishment? Or were you in a whole swirl of negative self-talk? Maybe it wasn't negative self-talk at all. Some of us don't do that. Some of us just talk shit about other people. So. Maybe it was the teacher's fault, because I asked you to try, right? So it's not like you did anything wrong. You just didn't like being asked. 
So just look at it. What's going on inside you? And we're challenged like that. And a pose that's kind of absurd for me to even offer in a general public class like this. I wanted to see what it would do to you. Would it inspire you to try something you never did before? Would it have you choose to revel in somebody else's beauty, the way they can move their body? Would it make you feel like you want to aspire to try maybe one day? This moment is an opportunity to look at who we are. How are we using our yoga? Let's bring our hands together at the heart and close our eyes. Presence, consciousness, awareness. an opportunity to see who we are and be who we are and express ourselves in the world. Take one more breath. Let's unfold our legs and put them on the mat right in front of us. Your feet can be hip distance apart. Make sure you put them far enough or close enough to you that when your knees bend, your feet can go flat. I want your knees bent and your feet flat so you get a really good feeling about the footprint. Sometimes I have to just dig in the ball of my foot and lift all my toes to get a feeling of like really being grounded here. So you can try that as well. Push into the ball of the foot and lift the toes. And then sit up really straight. Make your spine tall. And then reach your arms forward and take the shoulder heads and pull them back. Let's look, go ahead and lean back just a couple of inches. <coughs> just enough to feel everything engage. Sometimes my favorite things are the simplest movements that make us work so hard. Like all we did was just lean back a little bit. Now, are your triceps fierce? That's it. And I know that when the arms are like shoulder distance apart, it's nice and easy to keep the chest open. But I'm gonna challenge you to interlace your fingers, but still keep the chest wide. And then keep that spine really straight and twist to the right side. Uh-huh. Turn from your waistline. Let your head turn with you. Your breath is still steady. And this is a moment where we are faced with being challenged, but also being calm as we face it. Things might start to get a little shaky and ugly. And I think that's a really good thing. It gives us an opportunity to measure our grace. Now, I want you to twist a little bit deeper. Uh -uh, I know you guys just want out so bad. It doesn't matter what I say. You're just doing what you want, right? <laughs> I love it. So from that place now that you just tweaked in just a little deeper, can you put a smile on your face? Yeah. There's the grace right there. We are strong and powerful and graceful. Slowly return to center. Sit forward, bow your head, relax your neck. Let your belly soften. Sat Nam, the truth is my name. Let's come on up, straight spine. Tall as you can be, arms out in front, feet grounded. Lean it back, go ahead, lean back. That's it. 
Now we interlace, but we keep the chest wide. And then turn it to the left side. There's something coming. Shoulders back, chest lifted. Uh-huh. And then you're just going to twist a little more. Put a smile on your face. Right at the moment where you don't want to. That's where we do it. That's where it's important. Attitude adjustment moment. And then very slowly return to the center. Now, I want you to tuck your chin and round your back and release your hands so that your palms are facing upward. And then just slowly, one vertebra at a time, I want you to find your way. Roll your way all the way down onto your mat. So we roll it down slowly. And then just witness the grace of that. It's probably your favorite moment of class when she finally lets me lay down. <laughs> so just acknowledge it. And then I'd like you to pull your knees right up into your belly. Give yourself a good squeeze. That's it, a really good squeeze. And then I want you to rock your weight a little bit to the left, but only go halfway. So I'm sure there's a little bit of tension in your lower back or in your glute or in your upper hip in the back side. Just see if you can find a spot there that you could just kind of lean into. And then start breathing a little more deeply. And then rock it back to center and over to the right side until you just find that one sweet little spot and I want you to sit in it. We tend to roll right past that when we do the spinal twist and we miss the opportunity for just that little bit of pressure. Take one more breath there and then come back to the center. And if you would, open your knees a little wider that's it. Pull the knees toward the armpits and just give yourself a little squeeze. Now I'd like you to reach your arms right between your legs and grab a hold of your ankles or your heels. And then open the feet right up over the knees into happy baby pose. We didn't really do any opening today. So this is to release your lower back, to open your hips. You grab your ankles or your heels so that you actually can reach and then soften, soften. Some of you are rocking, it looks really sweet. Again, every pose is an opportunity for you to express it your way, for you to feel your body, to be understanding and sensitive to what's going on within you. If we don't come to know ourselves better, how can we express ourselves in the world? Now, release your feet. Bring your feet and your knees together. And put them down on the mat. The soles of your feet are gonna turn toward each other and the knees are gonna drop open. And I'd like you to take both of your arms up over your head. So completely relax your hip joint and your shoulder joints. And let yourself be for a moment. Heart wide open and breath flowing free. So I want you to stay nice and soft, just like this, but bring your knees back up to the center. Go ahead and open your arms out wide like wings. You can keep your palms facing up. And 
And then lift your knees towards your belly and twist them all the way to the left side. So let both knees go all the way around. And I want you to do this with some softness. So there's no muscle tension. There's no stopping yourself halfway. Just let the legs go completely and move your breath through your body. Take one good deep breath in and then an open mouth. Ah. Slowly make your way back toward the center. Keep your arms out wide and let your knees roll completely to the other side. So just a really nice unwinding and rewinding of the spine. Try to be soft when you get there. No muscle tension, no gripping, no holding. Let the earth support you. Let the tension go. Again, sensitivity. A willingness to shed the armor. And just really be who you are. To feel your heart. To remember that we're all human beings. We all really truly want the same things. If we all had a top 10 list of what was really, really important there would be way more things in common than not. Let's bring our knees back to the center. Go ahead and give them a nice squeeze. And then release your legs all the way down for your final resting pose. And the sun went in just now, so if you want to put your shirt on, sometimes when we lay st still, the body temperature drops a little. And so I want you to be really comfy, so go ahead, cover your feet, put on your jacket, and then just be able to lay in the stillness for a moment. the stillness to work the magic. The breath gets quiet. The body is still. And you might even find little glimpses of stillness in your mind. See it on the 
Let's begin our awakening with just one smooth, deep breath. As you feel the breath move through your body, you can start to move, stretch, and then eventually make your way to seated. We're all going to come up and sit facing in towards center. And at the end of practice, I always dedicate my message to you. I always take the opportunity to reinforce what we've been working on. But I actually want to take a moment here, and this may be a selfish thing for me to do, but I'm going to take a moment here and ask you to do this omen, to have this moment for a friend. It's someone who likes to come to the park. He's been coming for a couple of years. And this week he suffered a pretty severe stroke. And I know that he would rather be here than anywhere today. He's a really incredible man. His name is Paul Tress. I know that some of you know him. And I just have a feeling that if we do our own today for him, that he will feel it. He will feel like his presence was here with us in the park today. And so he is resting peacefully right now. And I know if he was able, he'd be leading the march. So if you would, with me today, will you give me an ohm that's so loud that we can hear it in Pinecrest, in Del Rey. We send our love to him. So he feels part of this community, the support and the love that each and every one of us would want if we couldn't be here and we were in the same situation. So let's take a deep breath in. And then with everything you've got, make that beautiful sound of ohm. I want to hear you. Om Shanti, 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 He. Om Peace, Peace, Peace. May peace be with every one of us. Peace with Paul and his family. And peaceful day today while everybody marches. May we all meet, march peacefully, demonstrate and speak our voices peacefully the way our democracy was meant to be. Namaste. Namaste. Yeah, happy Saturday. So for those of you that didn't know about the march but would like to stay, I'm just going to give you a little bit of information. It's set to begin across <coughs> the way at City Hall. Not this old City Hall town hall, but the, the City Hall on Crawford Boulevard. The march is going to come all the way from City Hall up through this street where the Burger King is. It's going to come all the way east until we get to Meisner, and then we're going to go up Plaza Real and end in the Meisner Park Amphitheater. There will be speakers there. I know um, a really good friend of mine is going to be singing this morning. So there will be um, information, festivities, all kinds of things going on. And the point of this march is called March for Our Lives. It was inspired by the kids in Parkland to speak up against the gun violence that's happening in our country. There are multifaceted solutions to this problem, but something has to start happening now. And so I ask you if you have the time to stay and march with us, um, no matter which side of it you're on, no matter how, what you believe the solution is, I think that we need to stand with Parkland and stand to make sure this doesn't keep happening. Yeah. Not just to our kids. It happens at rock concerts in Vegas. It's happening in nightclubs in Orlando. It's happening all over the place. It's not okay. 
So come, come march with me. Test. Sorry. Yeah. I also have my love buttons with me today. Spread the love. If you guys want to come get love buttons, information about the studio. And my next retreat is coming up in April. It's um, four nights, five days in the Blue Ridge Mountains. We're going to fly into Atlanta, so we'll be in the Blue Ridge Mountains in Georgia. It's four days of immersing in your yoga, if anyone's interested in that. Um, it's close by, you know, it's not far away, it's not for a long time, it's not like two weeks in Africa. <laughs> and it's a fraction of the cost of going to Africa. So if you'd like to get away and have an immersion, like a little bit of a, a yoga retreat experience, come see me. Love buttons? I love you, here. I love you. Yeah, wear that button. And the next time someone asks you about it, the whole point <laughs> is to spread love. Yeah, spreading love. Spreading love wherever we can. If we loved each other, we wouldn't shoot each other. Oh. Shout out. Yeah. I know, he'd be standing right by that. He'd be standing right by that statue. Right? Thank you. Oh, my God. Yeah. You're welcome. Magnet welcome. I love Thank you. I mean, you love yes, please do. Put one on him, too. I will. Thank you. Thank you. Hi.